Do you know how to implement the factory design pattern in C Sharp? Hi, my name is Sean from Campbell Tech, and today I'm going to show you how easy it is to implement the factory design pattern in C Sharp. Did you know that the factory pattern is one of the most used design patterns? The factory pattern is a creational design pattern that forms part of the gang of four design patterns which is used to create objects without exposing the creation logic to the client and refers to newly created objects using a common interface. In layman's terms, it basically encapsulates object creation and then decouples it from the client code that uses that object. This can improve your code maintainability, flexibility and reusability. You might ask, but why implement the factory pattern? Can't we just instantiate our optics in our client code? And that's a good question. Some of the benefits of using the factory pattern includes encapsulating optic creation and reducing coupling, providing a central point of control and configuration for optic creation, promoting the open close principle by allowing new subclasses to be added without modifying existing code, and enabling testing and mocking of the client code without actually instantiating real objects. Now let's look at a UML class diagram. I'm going to base my code example on a payment options use case. Notice that we have an iPayment interface with a pay method that takes in a single parameter an amount of type double and it returns void. And then we have three concrete classes that implements this interface, including a credit card payment, a PayPal payment, and a Google Pay payment. So when a client wants to instantiate one of these concrete objects, it can make use of the payment factory class that contains a create method that takes in a payment method, which will be of type enum, and that is used as the factory key, as it is called, for the factory method to decide which of the concrete implementations it should return. But without further ado, let's write the actual code. Here we have a simple console application. Let's start by creating our iPayment interface, as you've seen on the class diagram. And then let's only declare a single method. It'll return void, call it pay, and then it will only take in the amount of type double. Then let's go ahead and add our three concrete implementations to our project, starting with the credit card payment. Also add the PayPal payment class. As well as the Google Pay payment class. Then, let's start by implementing the credit card payment class. Let's implement iPayment. Then, let's say implement interface. We need to implement the pay method. And as you can imagine, credit card payment integration logic can be quite complex. The same goes for PayPal and Google Pay payment. Now, each one of these payment options will obviously have a different implementation and that is why we conveniently segregate them into different classes. However, to keep this factory method implementation as simple as possible, we are simply going to print out something to the console. So let's say console.writeLine and then let's use string interpolation. We can then say successfully paid. We'll use the dollar sign for our currency and then in curly brackets, we can put the amount and then say to merchant using a credit card. Now, as I said, we're only going to print out to the console. So our implementations will look similar. So let's copy everything to the colon that specifies that we are implementing the iPayment interface. All right. Then open up the PayPal payment class. Then let's go ahead and paste our code there. And then we simply need to change it to, to a merchant using PayPal. All right, the same goes for the Google Pay payment class. And then change it to, to merchant using 
Google Pay. Right, next up, let's go ahead and create a new enum class, call it payment method. And then here we will specify our payment options. The first one is credit card. The second one there, you can make PayPal. And the final one there, let's say Google Pay. All right. And now for the most important class, let's create a class for the payment factory. Now factory methods are normally static methods. So let's say public static, and then it should return iPayment, the interface. And then let's call our method create and then let's pass in the payment method enum because that will be our factory method key as it is known and then let's use a switch statement so we can say switch on payment method then we'll say case payment method dot credit card and then if it's credit card then return a new instance of credit card payment and if the value of payment method is PayPal, then return a new instance of PayPal payment. Similarly, if the value of the payment method is Google Pay, then return a new Google Pay payment instance. All right, and then let's use the default case to handle unsupported payment methods. So let's say if it's not one of those cases, we'll say throw new not supported exception. And then let's specify an exception message using string interpolation again. We'll say payment method is not currently supported as a payment method. So if for example, we have Apple Pay as an enum value, but we don't have a case for it, then we'll say it's not supported. And then Apple Pay is not currently supported as a payment method. All right, so let's go ahead and implement our client logic. So go ahead and write it in our main method here in the programs.cs class. Now, if you're not used to the new .NET versions, this is just basically a shorthand of the main method like we have it here. So we can say I payment payment equals payment factory dot create. Remember, this is a static method. And that's why we can simply invoke the create method. And importantly, this is actually best practice for factory methods because it in fact returns a new instance of a concrete implementation. Therefore, it's safe and recommended to use a static method for it. All right, so let's pass in a payment method there. We can pass in the credit card and then go ahead and invoke the pay method on the payment interface. And we'll pass in a thousand dollars there. Okay, so let's debug our code. You can press F5 if you're not aware of how to debug in VS Code. And then you'll see it hits our payment factory factory method, our create method. Then the value of payment method is credit card. It returns a new instance of credit card payment. Then it invokes the pay method. Notice it hits the pay method in the credit card payment class. And as you can see there in the console, it prints out successfully paid $1,000 to merchant using a credit card. Now let's go ahead and change the payment method value to PayPal. Now you might say, hang on, you said the client code won't change. Now in practice, this value will normally be passed through from a user interface or terminal or to a REST controller. So this value is normally supplied by the user, but the rest of the code will remain exactly the same. And that's why we can say we are complying to the open close principle that we will not modify our client code when we add new implementations or payment methods in our case to our application. Again, let's debug. So it hits our factory method. This time the value of payment method is PayPal. It returns a new PayPal payment instance. It hits the pay method in the PayPal payment class. And we print out successfully paid $1,000 to merchant using PayPal here in our console. Okay, you get the gist of it by now, but for completeness sake, let's also debug for Google Pay. So it hits our factory method. The value of payment method is Google Pay. 
and it returns a new instance of Google Pay payment. We invoke the pay method on the iPayment interface. It hits the Google Pay payments pay method and we print out to the console successfully paid $1,000 to merchant using Google Pay. All right, so let's go ahead and add another payment method to our payment method enum. Let's make it Apple Pay. And then let's go and update our client code. We pass in Apple Pay. And before we add support for it, let's debug. And as you can see there, it hits the default case in our factory method. And it throws a not supported exception. And as you can see there, Apple Pay is not currently supported as a payment method. But let's go and add support. So what we need to do is create a new class, call it Apple Pay Payment. Also implement iPayment. Let's implement the interface. And then let's just go ahead and copy the implementation from the Google Pay Payment class, for example. And then we are simply going to change Google Pay to Apple Pay. All right, one more thing. We need to update the factory method and add a case for Apple Pay. Just go ahead and copy that and add a case for Apple Pay. All right, and change that to new instance of Apple Pay payment. You might say, hang on, this can get quite nasty if we keep on adding support for more payment methods. But this is much cleaner than having your client code decide what payment method. Not even to mention that some developers would actually write all integration logic for all different payment methods into a single class, which is obviously not recommended. So you'd rather have a switch with 20 possible payment options returning a class for each than having all of that logic nested into a single class or expecting the client to handle and decide which instance to instantiate. All right, so one last time, let's debug through our code. This time we do have support for Apple Pay. It hits our factory method, returns a new instance of Apple Pay. We invoke the pay method on iPayment. It hits our pay method in the Apple Pay payment class. And we write to the console successfully paid $1,000 to merchant using Apple Pay. So as you can see, it's extremely simple to implement the factory method design pattern in c -sharp. If you enjoyed this video and would like to view more of these types of videos, please subscribe to our channel and click the like button. Till next time.